What's up guys? Welcome to Firefighting Simulator The Squad. I picked this game up over Christmas. I just haven't gotten around to playing it. I also have Barn Finders, um, Gas Station Simulator. Well, that one hasn't came out yet, but I got the demo, as you guys saw. Um, I picked up probably like four or five games over Christmas. I just haven't gotten around to playing them, so I'm just starting because I'm still trying to decorate. Not decorate, but... Uh, get furniture for the current house or the house that we just moved into um, so I'm still trying to do that as well as trying to play some games usually by the end of the day or around the time I want to start g gaming or something like that um, it's usually time to eat dinner or take the dog out to the dog park or do something so I'm sorry I haven't played in a while but we're going to try and get back to a regular schedule, you know. You know how that goes, though, sometimes. Sometimes life gets in the way and can't do that. But I want to try and get on a regular schedule of gaming again. We'll, like I said, we'll see how that goes. So we're going to try out this game right here. I haven't actually played it myself. I've seen uh, one other person play it. And that was probably for like 15 seconds. And I was like, I got to try that game. Because I used to like this game called emerge emerge nyc or something like that it just for like three years it stayed in early access and it just never got any better there's always bugs with it so i didn't get around to purchasing it because i wasn't going to pay 30 bucks for a game that had so many bugs in it so anyways let's get started let's see what this game's all about and go from there I think what people talk about in this game is that there's no open world. It's just strictly missions. Um, but I don't know. We'll see how we like it. Dispatch to Unit 1. The fire has spread to the roof of the house as well as an adjoining room. Backdraft potential in the area. Use extreme caution. The secondary unit is on site, providing water coverage for the burning roof. The evacuation status of the house is still unknown. Trying to look around and can't see the driver. Somebody's driving. Now they look this far down. Dispatch to Unit 1. Ladder truck is on scene and has assumed safety. Take it from here. You can get back to putting out fires and sinks. Thanks for getting me out of here.
done. My, my uh, concentration is trying to fire out. I wasn't even talking. Oh, that's like the intro. Nice. Yeah, that was pretty tough. I've never played a, a game quite like this before. But it looked like it was a lot of fun. It looked like it could be more fun. We'll just see what happens here. Next mission is already available. Sharp it. I'll do that later. I probably should do that now. <laughs> That's the training facility. Oh, I can't go to the next mission, right? Let me see. I need to use my mouse. No. Right. I might as well go there. I was going to say I'd do it later, but apparently I have to do it no matter what. So we'll try this out. See what it's like. Refresh my knowledge and refine my skills. Holy moly. This training exercise will get you familiar with using forcible entry tools on doors and walls. Walk forward and open the door. You got it. The next door is locked. Grab the crowbar off the bench and walk towards the door. Then, break it open. Good work. Now place the crowbar on the ground in the glow... Nicely done. Drop the tool. Place the Halligan tool on the ground. Demo hog. Grab the demo hog off the bench, walk towards the door, and bust it open. I need to do this. What do I do next? X. When there's no available door, create your own. You can break through some walls using any forcible entry tool. Look for the cracks in the wall and break through it with your axe. Back. Step back a little. Examine. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Let's go. This training will familiarize you with using forcible entry tools on windows to enter and exit rooms and buildings. That's now, cool. grab either tool on the bench, walk over to the window, and smash it open. At times, the window is too high to reach. Good, we're <laughs> almost done. Smash either window and climb through to the next area. Circular saw. This exercise will familiarize you with using power saws to cut through locks to open doors and vents. Okay, pick up the circular saw from the ground. Good. Now use the saw to cut the lock on the vent ahead. You have to be careful, so aim for the indicated target. Nice. Once more, pick up the saw. Gotta be careful. Now, walk over to the garage and new job complete. This training exercise will familiarize you with using ladders. To use a ladder, you must first attach to it. Walk over to the indicated spot and connect yourself to the ladder. Okay, now climb the ladder by pressing forward. Okay, now reconnect yourself to the ladder and climb back down to the ground. Whoa. Good, connect to the new ladder beside you. Now, climb up to... Good. Now climb through the window and enter the... You got it. Now where are we going? Up more stairs. 
Okay, now climb back down and we'll continue. Whoa. Job done. Interesting. <clears throat> the controls on that. And the, With this training know, exercise, to, like, we'll familiarize you with how quickly fire can spread. Okay, stay where you see. are and just watch the fire spread. Notice how fast it jumps from object to object. Ah. Now, grab a hose and put out the fire. Spray yeah. water by using the indicated button. Water by using the indicated button. Job done. Interesting. All right. Once again, just watch the fire spread. That was fast. Gasoline. What do I do? Okay, you know the drill. Grab a hose. Grab a hose and try to put out both grease fires. Grease fire? Why would you spray water at a grease fire? The water doesn't help, does it? No. In fact, it makes it worse. Water and grease fire don't mix. To fight grease and chemical fire, we'll need to use a portable CO2 extinguisher. Grab an extinguisher and aim it at the base of both fires. Sweep the extinguisher side to side on the plane Make sure you put it out. Good work. When out on calls, look for different types of flames so you can be ready for any grease or chemical fires you Everybody run into. Everybody knows you don't spray water at a grease fire. Can I go back or do I have to keep going with this? This exercise will get you up to speed on smoke how it affects your vision, and how to effectively clear it. Smoke yeah. is dangerous and can seriously harm you, which is why you'll always be equipped with an SCBA system to ensure you can breathe in any situation. When going into a smoke-filled area, be sure to use your helmet-mounted flashlight. It'll really make a difference. Turn it on now before entering the building. The best way to deal with smoke is to eliminate it. Venting a room allows the smoke to clear and makes it easier for you to see any dangers. This will really help when doing search and rescue operations. To clear the smoke, walk over to a window and open it. Good. With only a single window open, it'll take some time for the smoke to clear. To speed up the process, open all the windows in this room. Now, open the door and enter the next area. It's full of smoke. Steak. <laughs> open up all the windows. Now, open the door and enter the next area. Okay, we're going to take a different approach for this room. A smashed window is just as effective as an open window. If you need to vent smoke but run into a locked window, don't let that stop you. Grab a tool off the bench and smash both windows. Oh, 
normal. Can't see anything. This is not working like I thought it would. Nice work. The smoke will clear out in no time. In this next phase, we'll take a slightly smoke. different approach. If you still have the forcible entry. Enter the building by climbing through the window. It's smoky in here, too. Remember to stay crouched to improve your visibility as the smoke clears from the window you just smashed. Now, open the door and enter the next room. Okay, you know the drill. Stay low and open the window to clear. Training complete. I don't know. That was pretty tough with uh, trying to break the windows. Now we're going to learn about one of the most dangerous situations Not you'll ever it's encounter. But because a the controls. Backdrafts often surprise even experienced firefighters. Backdrafts occur when the oxygen right within a room has been used up and then more oxygen is rapidly reintroduced into the area. This is caused by opening a door or window in an oxygen-depleted environment. Drug when backdrafts occur, fire explodes <laughs> out of the door <laughs> or steam. window and can become a fast-moving fireball, causing damage to anything in its path and can even badly injure you. Okay, enough talk. Now we're going to show you a backdraft event. So you know what to look for in the backdraft situation. First, Walk over to the window on the left and look into the room. You'll notice that the room is full of smoke, but there are no visible signs of flames. This indicates that the room is above its upper flammability limit. This means that the gas or vapor in the air is capable of producing a flash fire. It just needs an ignition source, or oxygen. that the next locked door has signs of a potential backdraft.
mouth, I mean the fuse there. It's like third person, so you can't really see. Put out the fires in this room, then move through the door into the next room and extinguish the fires there. Good work. As I said before, even experienced firefighters can be surprised by backdrafts. So pay attention to any closed door that you approach and look for signs of backdraft. It could save your life. Backdraft. Establishing hoses. This training exercise will familiarize you with setting up attack hoses to fight fires and show you how to connect a fire truck to a hydrant water supply. First, we'll establish a water supply line. This ensures you never run out of water when fighting fires. Now, walk over to the indicated compartment on the truck and grab a supply hose. The supply hose is the yellow one. The yellow one? Okay, now, look directly at the connector on the truck. You'll notice that you... Nice job. Walk over to the indicated fire hydrant. Indicated. Good. Just like the connector on the truck, look directly at Now... Head over to the indicated connector on the other side of the truck and connect the supply line oh, to it. I didn't see that he had it on his arm. Like before, remove the cap, unroll the hose, and attach... What is this one? Back. I don't know. Good. How many hoses are there? Hydrant connected. Good. Now walk over to the indicated part of the truck where you can connect the attack hose. They're normally. Hey. Nice. We're going to need a nozzle for the attack line. The nozzle allows you to increase or stop the flow of water as needed. Set. Now, pick up the coupler from the ground and walk to the back of the truck. Open the lower compartment and swap the hose coupler with the nozzle. Now that you have a nozzle, look directly at the coupler on the ground. Go! Lock it through! Put out the fire!
Job done. <laughs> oh, two more squad With commands. With this training exercise, you'll give commands to your squad mates. This will allow others to complete tasks for you while you focus on other objectives. Have a look at the upper right corner of your screen. You can see the AI indicator along with the associated shortcut. Point at the circle on the ground and press the shortcut for the AI that you've just seen in the upper right corner. The AI character will now walk to the indicated location. Good. Now direct the AI to the second circle, followed by the third. Well done. You've just learned how to give go-to commands. Now call the AI to your position. To give the command, hold down the AI shortcut key until the status icon in the upper corner changes to the follow symbol. The AI will now follow you. Walk along the waypoints. As you can see, the AI is following you in close proximity as you move around. As you can tell, the AI is very closely following your movements. I've got your back, boss. Go ahead and instruct the AI to wait. Hold down the AI shortcut key until the status icon in the upper right changes. Two victims need help in that building. Your mission? Rescue them. Head through the door and into the building. The door's locked. Instruct your AI to equip a Halligan tool and come to your location. I'm on it. Come on, let's go. I have all day. All right, you can instruct the AI to open the door for you. AI can interact with all context-sensitive objects like doors, windows, victims, and many others. Your crosshair will change when you aim at objects your AI squadmate can interact with. Press the AI shortcut key while aiming at the door to command the AI to open it. Copy that. I'll follow you. I'm with you, boss. Lead the way. Okay, boss. I'll break it open. Well done. Now, follow the indicated on-screen interaction. The AI squad can grab a hold and start combat with fire. Door is open, boss. Yes, sir. Get on it.
another fire in the next room. Command the AI to deal with the fire there, too. Give another go-to command to send the AI into the room with the fire. Yes, Commander. I didn't do anything that I wanted to This to training do. exercise will familiarize you with how to use ladder trucks and aerial arms to attack fires from above and to rescue victims in elevated locations. Before extending the truck's ladder, we must first stabilize it and ensure that the truck will not tip over with the ladder boom extended. Mm -hmm. Walk over to the indicated control panels and extend all the truck's outrigger arms. Got While it. deployed, the outrigger arms simultaneously bypass the vehicle's movable suspension and gives the truck. Good. The ladder arm offers you three degrees of movement. Up, down, left, right, and forward, backward. Extending the ladder arm forward and backward effectively lengthens and shortens the length of the ladder. Now, use the indicated controls and move the ladder in the up and down directions. Good. Now, use the indicated controls and move the ladder in All right. Now, use the indicated controls. Hold X to move the basket arm. Move bucket to the victim on the roof. That's the end. I'm looking for the victim on the roof. Now he's way down here. Whoa. The <laughs> player can exit the bucket by pressing the use key. Tough. This thing is losing its mind. Conscious victims will not move towards the bucket. You must place the bucket near the victim, exit the bucket, and interact with the victim to get them to follow you into the bucket. Let's go. When the bucket has reached the indicated area and the bucket is stable on the roof, the player can exit the bucket by pressing the use key. Exit the bucket and rescue the victim by interacting with them and returning to the... Okay, you've saved one victim. 
Now position the bucket near the other indicated roof and wait for the victim to reach the bucket. Okay, these controls are wonky. Okay, you've saved one victim. Excuse me, sir. Let's go. <laughs> See, uh, not inside the basket. Excuse me, sir. Press the indicated button now to switch back to controlling the bucket movement to try it out. When you've relocated the bucket to a better location, switch back to controlling the nozzle and extinguish the fires. Use the mouse on this one. This is, it's super slow. The control. It's a tough spot for the fire. I mean, I don't know. You'll probably get right above it, but I'll keep it right here for a minute. It, it turned it turned around on me the controls instead of going up the up is down the down is up well, I think because of the way the box or the arm is. Press the indicated button now to switch back to controlling the bucket movement to try it out. When you've relocated the bucket to a better location, 
switch back to controlling the nozzle and extinguish the fire. Press the indicated button now to switch back to controlling the bucket movement to try it out. When you've relocated the bucket to a better location, switch back to controlling the nozzle and extinguish the fires. So weird. Control. Is this down? Or is this up? Oh, that's up. Down is up and up is down. are out. Job done. Congrats. You've <laughs> completed the firefighter training course and are ready to handle any situation so you can save as many lives as possible. Feel free to return to the training facility to practice your skills if you need help with the more difficult emergency calls you may encounter. The controls are Remember, a little wonky. We train today to be safe tomorrow. But anyways, guys, that's going to be it for this episode. There's going to be a lot of other fires in the near future. Hopefully, I'm a little bit more prepared as I did need that training video or the training part. Uh, but I hope to see you guys next time. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys next time. Take care. Peace out.